each and every stool. And right now you are seeing these kind of uh, uh, shuttering and uh, support system employed. One meter to two meter over ends are there of the stone pieces. So they, they some of these stones were uh, you know degraded. So there was a apprehension that the stone may fall. So they had created that kind of support system to stop the falling of these stones. There are many types of supporting for the pillar stones. Finally, after a lot of discussions and deliberations, we could suggest this kind of system. Now, this is the recent picture and this long columns in steel you know which are minimum intruding to the eye have been proposed and now they are that is kept so that these stones meter here and 1.8 meter at the corner are supported. The next Ghana building of President State Dharadun. In this, let me tell you, in Dharadun there is a Rashtrapati Ji's Nivas also, which he uses, the President of India uses sometime. So in the bottom side, you see the picture how it was. Uh, hello, sir. And in the top, you can see the... Uh, hello, sir. Hello, sir. Mm -hmm. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, tell me, Vimal. You are that uh, sharing of the screen is stopped. Hello, hello sir. Yes. Yes. Sharing of the screen is stopped. Why it is so... Yes, it is stopped. It is again asking me. Yes, sir, you have to... It is doing some trick. Yeah, again share it. Is it now visible? Hello? Uh, still not, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Uh, now it is showing, sir. Now it is showing. It is working. Yes, sir. Acha, it is showing. It takes some time. Some time gap is there. So, is it now full screen? Uh, no, sir. Right now, not in full screen. Can you see the full? Okay, there is a time gap. Although it is showing to me. So you are seeing the Ashana Presidential Stadium? Yes, sir. Ashana Building and Presidential Estate Dehradun. But uh, it is not in the full screen. My screen is showing to you? Uh, yes, sir. It is visible.
आई एम सॉरी फॉर दी हिच सिलेक्टिव विंडो और स्क्रीन एंटायर स्क्रीन अलाउ Hello, Vimal. Can you hear me? Ah, uh, yes, sir. I can hear you, and I can also see this screen. Ah, uh, so this is not in the slideshow. Okay. Mode. So please, uh, slideshow. Okay. Now, now I have made it in slideshow mode. Is it now okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, finally. <laughs> so many things. Anyway, I'm sorry for the hitch. I will go quickly because I'm limiting my time, and there are many things to be told. Anyway, this is the uh, presidential state where President of India comes and stays. It is in Dehradun. So, in the bottom of the picture, you can see uh, the condition when uh, CPWD is the custodian of this building. They opened it up and they got worried. and they wanted us uh, the president wanted the same building to be maintained so they had two options it's a heritage building it's not a monument building okay right now we are taj mahal and thing we did we they were monument they are monuments okay and but uh, pranav mukherjee the then president wanted it to be in preserved in that manner maintained so in the top photo what you see is the final outcome uh, Four years back, I think it was done. So uh, okay, the structural assessment and testing earthquake resistant provisions were done by CBRI. A combined stone and brick masonry load bearing structure in 1920, without any earthquake resistant feature, was as this. The old building is in distressed condition and has also developed some cracks on it. walls and arches this is the kind of uh, you know walls when you remove plaster they could see this and the kind of conducting they have done haphazardly different type of materials because change in use also happen in fact we we treat our buildings very badly and then we expect them to behave properly during an earthquake or during their service life so you see there are brick masonry at the top but stone masonry patching done then there are brick arches so this was a very difficult task so we white cracking on a wall in the dining room was also seen okay so what we suggested them we suggested them the bands provision of the bands we my quick calculated the amount of reinforcement required for this load and a welded wire mesh bands were suggested to them we also suggested to them for a centering of the underpinning of the foundation because we didn't want foundation to fail okay so this kind of the masonry wall they were also you know uh, provided with uh, through stones if through stones are not there we provided them with the double bars and rcc so that uh, the this wall be, behaves as a single unit we you know provided reinforcement in the corners like this all corners and then when this building was uh, finally done the president himself came for inauguration and on the left corner of my side you can see the present uh, hrd minister uh, dr ramesh pokhrial nishank was also there at that time and we He explained to him what it was and what we have made. Then he was very courteous and asked only that, Dr. Mittal, can I stay in this building safely for two nights? I said, Sir, you can surely stay because uh, it has been done nicely, and uh, all the forces we have calculated. There are going to be seismic zone four. We have calculated the uh, provisions for higher than that. So this building was inaugurated on 28 September 2016. So this is the kind of thing. Now I would like to take you to some of the advantage in heritage structure research, where many of the engineers and scientists are working and can work. Okay. So 
in CBRI, we took a study where they, we did classification, digitization research, structural analysis, distress diagnosis, hybrid entity is a very strong area where we want to work. We even work with environmental aspect and material development and restoration technologies. So I'll touch a few of them very quickly and then we'll stop for question answer if you have any. Like these, we, what we came out with many of these studies that uh, sometimes it is uh, very difficult to analyze a full structure and comprehend a full structure. So we said that rather than doing a complete analysis, we should try to work on simplified analysis procedure because complete analysis is very difficult. So every prediction of location of most vulnerable location can be done. So this photograph you are seeing is of FRI building. And we tried to, you know, do a modeling. And around the world, some people are working on, uh, you know, simplified models where we can do a facade analysis. Where we can do a part of the building analysis. Like when we do in RCC, we, we initially study a 2D photo frame. We don't directly analyze a 3D frame of a 10 story building. Even if you analyze a 2D portal frame, 2 bay, 2 story, we get fairly good idea what is happening, other loads we can assume. So uh, we are using softwares like Dyna, Midas, Console, MATLAB, and says Abacus, and we have analyzed with these kind of simplified procedures, building of CSMT Mumbai, Chhatpadish Village Tamnas building, DRM building Mumbai, even for Taj Mahal we use ANSYS, Saint Temple Konark also we used ANSYS for the 3D analysis. You see, this is the most distressed uh, when we did numerical analysis of CSTM building. The problem is at the top story, these columns are having some, some columns are cracking. So, we, we tried to analyze only this part where there was a problem. So, segregated it with appropriate boundary conditions in SAP 2000 and stress contour of the facade showed high stresses in these stone columns. So, there was a reason we could predict the location as we can see by the eye judgment by doing this analysis. This is a great area. We need to do some of the more developments so, and refine the techniques. Obviously, it requires a lot of uh, understanding. We also try to analyze the DRM building, which you can see the yellow dot shows a crack in the top of the arch. And then we try to calculate this. Further analysis, I'm sorry, this result is not here with me. Uh, we have done that we have, you know, there is a technique called stitching of the crack using SS bars. So where a stainless steel bar goes across the crack. So we tried on the thickness of the wall, there were two, two bars across the crack and we tried to see how much stresses, redistribution of the stresses can take place on this place where there was a crack in the uh, arch. So we could predict that by the facade analysis only. Okay, we have one slide. You know, in uh, Puri temple, at the, at the just outside where Lord uh, sits, the hall, there is a beam which is showing some crack. So, stone beam. Beam means stone beam, large stone beam. Photography inside is not allowed, so I cannot share the photographs with you. Okay, because I don't have. And we, there is a steel portal frame which was designed by one of the structural engineers. So, they, they asked us, sir, can you suggest us what kind of loading is being transferred on this steel portal frame? So, CBRI is monitoring this from July 2018. All the vibrating wire strain gauges which were installed in this steel portal frame, Puri Jagannath Temple, Odisha. Okay? Right now, there is nothing to worry not much uh, the stresses other than temperature variation and seasonal variation is coming. But there is nothing to worry as such. And we have calculated the alarm levels also for this structures. Wherever there is a stresses or strains more than this level, we can issue alarm. 
so right now the frequency of data is every day and it comes every week to us in a day once the data is collected and it comes to us we 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 have not employed a online data monitoring system which was also possible technically but for some uh, reasons we didn't employ this so this data is taken uh, by a gadget by asi official every day and in a week they they supply all the data to us okay we have also carried out a skill development program where we have carried out uh, training courses for the students free of cost in four zones of india north south east and west and uh, that was also a great uh, um, satisfying exercise which we did now i come to the entity why i am telling you structural analysis and entity after visual observation most important technique because if you try to take samples you try to carry out material properties you know engineers how they analyze they should they should know geometry and material properties then only engineers can uh, by their all efforts and analysis can tell you what kind of stresses are there how they can uh, go about it so we we have ndt comes very handy to us because we in monumental structure you are not allowed to even touch scratch or take like this because they they are worried that this may harm the structure and uh, so we have to do a non invasive and the technique you have to depend so it is the non invasive technique to determine the integrity of the material component or structure a lot many structural engineers with high mathematical background are working in this area in my team also two of the scientists are working in this area they are doing quantitative measurement of some characteristics of an object and diagnose without doing harm and damage to the material that is the advantage of entity technique so there are many of the entity technique one obviously is the visual inspection and boroscope but rebound hammer you know you may be knowing flat jack which is used for masonry buildings and it can it can give you strains and e value of the existing structure but slightly destructive in nature because you have to cut the grooves to fit in the flat jacks then there are parallel seismic activities which is very good technique if you master to understand the underground uh, foundation system half cell electrical potential meter is for corrosive thing we have magnetic pulse induction x ray tomography infrared thermography impact eco testing ultrasonic testing and gpr now all these techniques are being used uh, in combination sometime and uh, sometimes uh, in soul and the idea is to ascertain the engineering properties of the the distress condition of the distress in the heritage structure they are all good the person working in this they are all good for modern structures but for heritage structure they become more and more difficult to ascertain so there is a visual inspection then there are sign of distress i'll go quickly we have known this we are left with only 15 20 minutes so there are cracks pop outs spalling disintegration color change weathering staining surface blemishes lack of uniformity so everything is to be done through visual inspection then we have measuring tape ruler marker thermometer anemometers binoculars telescope because many a time we in accessible part we used to zoom over camera take a picture and then see uh, what is the condition because you cannot inaccessible location endoscopy and other equipments then ultrasound you all know frequency is about 20 kilohertz or ultrasonics and uh, ultrasonic application is an entity in medical also you use this equipment in geophysics also you use this and in sonar wave in ocean also you use this 
we are concentrating only on entity part here what we do so what we can get from ultrasonics is homogeneity of the material we can also get presence of cracks voids and other imperfections we can also get changes in structure of the concrete with time we can also get quality of material related to standard requirement quality of one element of material in relation with another values of dynamic elastic modulus also we are trying to ascertain it is a, it is now quite established technique for rcc but we are trying to establish this for uh, stone also and other things so this is uh, there is electroacoustic transmission which said longitudinal shear and surface waves and then it comes back as you can see and we can see the any of the signature of any of the cavity or distress available in the in the material and we can understand this these are the common ultrasonic techniques which are upv and uh, many of the things are done we have already developed our algorithms to use normal upv to do the imaging which you can see on the left bottom of the corner on a test specimen we have created you know in the laboratory and established that is there is a, a, a you know discontinuity in the material or anomaly in the material can be designed on the right side we can locate a g bar through upv okay that is also possible then what are the factors affecting smoothness of contact surface in the test you remember in the beginning i told that in the heritage structure there are no smooth surfaces they are always carvings present so it becomes very difficult to do test influence the path length on pulse velocity temperature of the specimen moisture condition of the concrete is case of concrete presence of reinforcing steels there is another method which is quite useful in rcc also which is a impact echo method where it uses impact generated stress waves and that propagate through medium the wave propagate through the surface assuming it to be homogeneous medium surface reflection of these waves show location and extent of flaw such as crack delamination voids for masonry it can determine thickness and locate cracks voids and other defects where the brick or blocks are bonded together with mortar it is not adversely affected by presence of steel reinforcing bar that is the good thing about this technique i will try to tell you with a diagram you see if you see a sample which is on the top left of your corner and we impact surface here and we receive the waves go like this and you get a that kind of frequency curve from the instrument which is a peak okay frequency peak then if there is a slight delamination which is in part so some waves will go up some wave will return from half and you will get two peaks so if you get two peaks you can ascertain you can you can conclude and you know in these things a lot of experience of the person understanding the results does, does matter so you can see what is happening further if the if the, if the distress is the quality is poor then you get a shift in the peak <coughs> and you get a higher frequency but if it is totally degraded in very serious condition then you get a flat and curve you don't get a peak so this way people are trying to work we have started working in this with this equipment in cbri and soon we will uh, try to come up with more knowledge base in this area flat jack technique as i have told you to drill the flat jacks apply flat jack and then you can monitor apply load and when you cut the sleeve if it is a over stressed masonry already it relieves itself and you can measure those strains so this is possible through flat jet and it is very good because you want to know in a masonry structure 
what is the e value you should use in your quantum analysis if you don't know the e value your all results can go here and you don't know what you are getting whether it is correct or not then there is a gpr which we have used uh, our geophysicists have used this in many of the structures to there, there is a control unit antenna and power supply and they try to use it something like this there is a cavity it keeps on giving you kind of uh, if you see there is a uh, this is going up and there is the b scan a scan and b scan you can see in b scan this is a uh, you know problem area here so what you see in a radar gram a kind of if that kind of thing you will get this kind of signature there is air and substrate and you get this boundary by a straight line and a, and this boundary by a concave convex surface of the radar gram a lot of experience is needed because this is very simple in the uh, animation but you really do when you really do in the field it becomes very difficult and a lot of experience and expertise is required and sometimes we have to go with the correlative test at a desired location and then do a gpr survey at other places to come up similarly uh, there are different frequency and uh, lower the frequency higher the depth you can go so with the 50 hertz frequency antenna we can go up to 20 meter depth in a soil okay but if it is a high frequency say 2000 megahertz you can go up to 0.5 meter okay so very small it can be used for rcc elements also with the high frequency antennas okay this is the kind of thing what we are doing in gpr we are trying to use gpr to and develop the algorithm where you can you see this test specimen on right top this is our laboratory photograph where we have reinforcement and delamination and when we <coughs> use different uh, algorithms we can ascertain what is inside this while on top you can see this kind of uh, surface and uh, we have did we did the same uh, kind of analysis on the solani aqueduct okay which is in rookie so this is the photograph of this one here could have in a dilapidated condition now so this is the google image of the solani aqueduct this we carried out we carried out aperture 1 aperture 2 and aperture 3 survey canal flowing direction and there is a road this was our 400 megahertz antenna and this was run on the uh, carriage way on the canal and can you see these kind of uh, reflections of the arches continuous reflection of the arches which otherwise is not visible and we can see in the cross direction also some of the arch locations and some of the gel reviewing gallery signatures in the radar grams obtained from the gpr so then a geometry is created using the gpr technique and match with the existing drawing and we could get fairly good results we need to do more in this area parallel seismic activities also as i told you there is a borehole and you do and try to catch signatures in the other borehole then there is a electrical resistivity method electrical resistivity method is electric resistivity thermography uh, imaging and it is a geophysical technique for imaging sub surface structure from electrical resistivity measurement made at the surface by electrodes and the signal goes and accordingly on the horizontal stretch on the uh, surface you can go up to the uh, one fifth of the depth in the inside of the earth and you can get uh, a lot of uh, the 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 principal you go at different paths and this kind you can you can understand the resolution so sinkholes wide location mapping of depth to the bedrock ground water table mapping of bedrock mapping extent to conductive conductive environment landfill delamination 
and our archaeological site mapping can be done using this equipment. We have done this, used this for FRI Dharadun building also, other than places. This is my team working there and they calculated this. Very, very important equipment, what we are doing right now is thermography. Very quick, we go for the thermography, long, long range thermography, this is the camera we have and it's a, we do both passive thermography and active thermography. In passive thermography, we can uh, use inherited structures and modern structure for moisture penetration, plumbing uh, locations because temperature changes and to test effectiveness of the curing also can be used. In active thermography, we, we give an external heat source and try to defect the, uh, detect the voids inside the structure because temperature changes and our equipment can read those Oh, oh, okay. So this is again some examples of the thermography which we did in UP irrigation workshop, thermography, FRI, Dehradun, because there were many locations as you see, this drain pipe is coming, there is a water in gas all inside this. So we have given recommendation and they are now repairing under the process of repairing of this. We have done it for Chhatpati Shivaji terminus building and many other places. In active thermography, this is the defect location which can be done on the same sample. What we used for the wall, masonry wall, we, we created, heated it, so different heat temperatures were ingressed. Okay, I will, I think now I should end my presentation. Thank you very much uh, for your patient hearing and thank you, I'm really sorry because there were some troubles in sharing the Mm, slides during the presentation. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Vimal, uh, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, yes, I don't know. Sir, I, know I, could, I could make it interesting for the students. I have to cover a lot of things. So, yes. from the earthquakes to the edited structures. So, uh, I'm open to the um, open to you for any further course of action. Any questions? Okay. Now, uh, I would like to request uh, our participants uh, if they have any query and they want to interact with the, uh, Dr. Asil Kumar Mitalji, uh, please ask your queries and interact with them. I can see Dr. Amrit Kumar Rai also logged in, although he is muted. Dr. Pradeep Kumar, okay. Are you in NIT doing any of the heritage structures uh, study because Himachal has a traditional structure history and a very kind of earthquake resistant. I, I read an article about a building. Uh, so I think being in Hamirpur, you can have access to those kind of structures. Hello. Uh, yeah, I think Pradeep sir want to say something. Uh, hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Ah, also it was very good lecture. Thank you. And आपने क्या investigation करनी होती है वो सारा बहुत detail में बताया. I was just uh, listening to it. And I think uh, the participants they must have been benefited out of uh, your very vast experience and uh, uh, your uh, all the knowledge that you have shared with them. Thank you very much, sir, from NIT Hamirpur and personally for, from my behalf. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Pradeep. Thank you, Dr. Pradeep. Thank you for giving me opportunity to interact. I thank all of you, and I have many friends in now, increasing friends in. Uh, you are already there, Dr. Amrit is there, Dr. Vimal is there, and many more are there. So, very happy to interact with you. Please do come and visit us whenever you get opportunity. Sure, sir, sure. We will come there and uh, we will. Probably this is due to COVID that you will not make your physical appearance here. No, no, we will not. It's for you to be here whenever we get a chance. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. thank you very much for this comprehensive presentation and also I again would like to thank, thank you because uh, of giving me the consent to present a lecture in this uh, ESTC.
this lecture was uh, very informative and also uh, important because the heritage structure is not only the structure or place of visit it is our uh, it represents our cultural and uh, engineering skills in the past uh, so that must be preserved and uh, this lecture definitely is uh, uh, make us understand the problems associated with the heritage structures that are not only the loading but also the crack inside of the structure so thank you thank you very much sir for giving such a beautiful uh, lecture thank you dr vimal thank you very much nice talking to you bye bye keep bye. in touch bye yes sir